Well, guys, before we get to our uh, Super Bowl cuisine, I want to tell our listeners about a spot that they can pick up all kinds of great cuisine. That's Rivals Tap House and Grill, our favorite spot to gather. Watch sporting events, 21 flat screen TVs, and their great 120-inch projection screen. You know, come on in for the Super Bowl 53 as the Patriots and Tom Brady take on the Rams. All the fun kicks off at noon with a cornhole tournament to benefit the city of Corona and their 150th birthday celebration all day long long specials including 50 wings for 30 bucks dine in or carry out that's the official gathering spot for three point podcast rivals tap house and grill located on the corner of shiawassee and m21 in corona all right jared start us off you seem to be the food expert well my first problem was with uh scott johnson's answer did you tell that he's you know he's still he's obviously been in michigan for a long time but the first thing he threw out was coney dogs you know kind of trying to pull at our strings as like michigan people uh, but my number one on my list, and this has to be at every single Super Bowl party, is buffalo chicken dip. But there's two key components you have to add to this buffalo chicken dip. One, it has to be in a slow cooker that keeps it warm constantly. Because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when cheese and the dips, when they sit and they get cold, it kind of turns into a rock. So then when you try to dip your chip into it, it, it cracks. It you definitely know, firms up. Sound, You're right. Sound effect for you. <laughs> That's the chip cracking, so you can't have that. And as for the chip itself, it can't be Tostitos. Tostitos just aren't overrated in general. The scoops, the regular chips, they're all not good. They need to be any kind of Dorito. That's the best type of chip. That's what you need for your buffalo chicken dip. Up from Rivals, of course. Oh, nothing wrong with that for sure. Now, I'll jump in. I'll give one of my go-to foods. It's similar but I like the taco dip, the five- or seven-layer taco dip. I don't necessarily go with Doritos as my chip of choice, but I will go with a good, you know, a good name brand uh, tortilla chip. You know, maybe mix in some yellow with the blue. That's just a must. I love the taco dip. How about you, Matt? Yeah, I like the yellow and blue chips. Those, those are nice. But I definitely agree that I, there's this dip that we used to make. I haven't made it in a long time. Uh, we, we call it money dip. It's literally just Hormel chili and cream cheese. Ooh. Really simple. But I used to always make it or eat it with tortilla chips. But one time, probably in college, like we didn't have any, and all we had was Doritos. Had it with Doritos, and that was like it was a game changer. Thank Eating you. that dip with Doritos just made it like a completely different food experience. So Wait. I, I'm on board with the Doritos for, for dip. Uh, maybe it depends on what it is, but I, I like the Doritos. Matt, can you ex- – wait, back it up. What's, it's called money dip. So a couple of questions that came right to my brain. Why is it called money dip, and what is in it again? Money dip, just because it's money. <laughs> Hormel chili and cream cheese? Is that what you said? Hormel chili, chili with no beans, because you can get the Hormel chili with beans or without beans. Yes. Hormel chili, no beans, and cream cheese. Cream cheese. That sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Most simple, uh, like dip or whatever, but it, it is so good, especially with the Doritos. Now, my second item, I picked three since we are a three-point podcast. My second item is uh, a good chicken wing spread. Boneless or bone-in, I don't care. But I like personally the boneless myself. But uh, I think chicken wings are a must at a Super Bowl party. See, here's a, see, here's a hot take. Give me fried chicken over just the straight chicken wings. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're so much better. The thing that's important with the chicken wings, you got to have a whole array of dips. I'm talking ranch. I'm talking spicy buffalo ranch, blue cheese. Maybe go to KFC and pick up some uh, finger looking good sauce. You got to have a, a big array of sauces. I think chicken wings are only as good as the sauce that's on them. I, I'll kind of give you that, but I, I go along with, and my whole theory on a Super Bowl party, it's got to be grazing food. You know, chick, uh, you know, mm-hmm. fried chicken, not as much as wings. I think wings, you can go up to the counter multiple times during the game. You know, get your chicken wings, get two or three or whatever you want to do every time you go up to graze. And yeah, you do have to have a decent assortment of dips. I'm curious to ask you guys. I'm I'm definitely on board with the wings. I think I don't know if it's something about a you know a football party or whatever, but wings I feel like is just a must. Mm-hmm. But so my wife and I we don't eat that much meat anymore. We're not like full on vegetarian or anything, but we don't eat that much meat. Uh, and recently, my wife started making cauliflower buffalo bites. So instead of hmm. chicken, it's breaded cauliflower. You know, and then so it's breaded, and then it's in buffalo sauce and everything like that. And honestly, don't can't tell a difference. Really? I mean, if I the first time I, I knew what it was, so I, I almost wish she wouldn't have told me. I almost wish she would have said like, "Here's here's some buffalo wings or whatever." But like honestly, like if you didn't tell someone, I don't think they'd be able to know. So like, what just first thought without having them, 
Does that even sound good to you guys or what? My problem with those is that that's the classic, like, oh, we're healthy, but yet we're eating all this this fried and rubbed in buffalo sauce and <laughs> cooked and dipped in ranch. That's my first problem with it is that, you, I mean, is it kind of like it's the healthier option? Is that kind of the reason for it, Matt? Yes and no. Yes, because we just we don't eat that much chicken anymore. No, because we know we're slathering it in buffalo sauce. I'm dipping mine in ranch. We're putting blue cheese crumbles on it, so we definitely know that it's not like a healthy option. It kind of fits. Don't eat that much chicken anymore. It kind of fits your lifestyle, though. It sounds to me like you guys are trying to get a little way away from meat, right? Yeah. Yep. So I I can respect that. Now back to your question, I would try it, but it doesn't sound too appealing to me. But I'll (laughs) I'll take your word for it that it's it's pretty good. It'd be interesting though. That's I I told her the last time we had it, I was like. Speaking of Super Bowl food, I was like, if we go to a Super Bowl party, we should make a big old thing of these and just, like, send them out and see if anyone even, like, says anything. Now, that's the way to do it. Right. Just say they're, say we brought some boneless wings. Here you go. Like you said, Jared, get some good dips, some different, you know, uh, dressings, ranch, blue cheese, and all that, and just let people eat them. See if anyone says anything. That would piss me off because <laughs> that's, like, that's like when you trick, like, when a vegan will bring something that's vegan and not tell anyone that it's vegan. And then, like, kind of act like they pulled one off on you. That, like, when I'm eating at a Super Bowl food, I don't want vegetables. I don't want it, even if it's covered in buffalo sauce, covered in ranch, covered in breading. I don't want it. Get it away from me. Uh, that's unacceptable to bring to it without at least alerting people that it's cauliflower. Like you said, t- Ted's not even going to touch it. He hears the words <laughs> vegetable or cauliflower. He's out. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I am on that page right now, and it's probably not good for me either. How about you, Jared? You got another food uh, that you want to throw on the list? Yeah. Number two, um, these are a little bit tougher to pull off, but if you can, they're everyone's favorite. They only they run out quick is the only problem with them. Potato skins, loaded potato skins. Oh. You get the bacon, you get the cheese, you get the sour cream, you get the green onions. Is there anything better than a good potato skin That's... on an appetizer tray? What's your guys' favorite thing that comes with like a appetizer sampler? I kind of like the, the, the uh, fried mozzarella myself. Yeah, fried mozzarella, but uh, like I like a really good spinach and artichoke dip. That's good, too. But, you know, I hadn't even thought about potato skins in a long time. It's a lot of work to put together, but, man, it is delicious. There's no doubt. You know, there's always that person. I mean, speaking of, like, being healthy or whatever, there's always that person that brings, like, and it might be legit. I mean, it might be huge, uh, like a vegetable spread. You know, you got the carrots, celery, broccoli, cauliflower, and then, like, the little cup of vegetable dip in the middle. Do you guys even touch that or what? Yeah, I, 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 I'm not against that. I don't mind mixing in a little uh, little. Carrot, baby carrots in uh, you know ranch dressing and a little uh, broccoli. I like to mix that in there a little bit because I like to stay uh, you know regular the next morning. Make you feel a little better about your plate. You've got like yeah, all exactly. these dips, wings, sure. all this stuff, and then you got like two chunks of broccoli off to the side. It, it does a little it, better. It does, but to tell you the truth, I actually like it. I do like yeah. broccoli and carrots and celery and cauliflower <laughs> and dipping it into the ranch. I do. Yeah. I won't make I, a meal know, of it, I but I do like to dip into it. No, I, I like it. You're a liar, but you <laughs> like the taste of broccoli. No, you like the taste of ranch dipped in broccoli. Now, th- that part's true. You're right. I like so, it, Matt, because I, I know I mentioned earlier that I usually tend to stay away from vegetables, but I don't hate it's kind of you got to have a palate cleanser. And that's what vegetables act with. The thing that's key with that is I'll just dip it in a pound of ranch and then just you know act like I'm being healthy for a little bit so that I can go back to having some of the good food like fried chicken or buffalo chicken dip. <laughs> So is that, is that kind of your go-to, or, like, are you guys grazers? You know, sometimes, like, when I go to parties like that, like, all of a sudden the game's getting over or you're getting ready to leave, and I'm like, man, I feel like I didn't even really eat that much. Because, you know, you get, like, one plate, start socializing, start watching the game, you forget about the food. Do you just keep going back, getting the, like, little plate of food, a little here and there type you, of thing? You, know, you guys have seen me. I, I, I am definitely not shy about <laughs> multiple grazings. <laughs> See, you're, you're, you take grazings and you mentioned like the fried chicken and you've seen me eat and you've taken photos of social media you posted all over social media you, <laughs> you made me feel like a lab rat on thanksgiving because i had a, a big second plate i see that it still bothers I, you I, I graze but it's with big amounts of food <laughs> and so matt i can't imagine your scenario you just painted where you forget to eat that's not the food is the main attraction to me on super bowl sunday then it's football Food, then football. That's how you have to attack your your Super Bowl Sunday if you want to do it the right way. Well, that obviously no, that, is your that's cheat That's the day. way to go about it. Exactly. Like you said, it's my cheat day, so it's I, you can tell that I've been thinking about it for, you know, 
pretty much since my last cheat day. That's kind of how my brain works. It's like, oh, five days till cheat day, five days till cheat day, yeah, four they're... days till cheat day, three days. It, that's It's kind of bad. It's not great. <laughs> it's kind of just like one happy day, and then everything else kind of sucks. But That's not a bad way to go, though. You're staying in shape. I need to start looking at that or maybe – cut down to two cheat days <laughs> i don't know <laughs> now i'm gonna finish up my list my, my list right now taco chips or taco dip and tortilla chips chicken wings my third go-to food for a super bowl party a good pizza you know i like having some pizza to to have as well that's my third nice little main street pizza main street pizza also good pizza no, over at rivals ass. they've got a nice thin crust over there no pizza's yeah, good no. I feel like you have to, like, order it. So, I don't know. Like You, you do. You know, does someone, like, order, like, 30 pizzas? You know, maybe not 30, but, you know, someone's not just going to, like, walk in with one pizza from Papa John's or something and be, like, slap it on the table. No, I think it's up to the host for the pizza, right. I think. Yep. Yep. See, I, I got a problem with pizza on Super Bowl. It's, 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 I, it, this is a Twitter saying for you. It's a basic, and sorry for the profanity, bitch move. It's a basic bitch move to bring pizza. I can have pizza every Give me my pizza on every Saturday during college football season. But on Super Bowl Sunday, you bring me chicken wings, you bring me potato skins, maybe some mac and cheese, you, the vegetable tray, I'm fine with it, throw it out there. Pizza, it, it's, not a, it's not a grazing dish, like you said. I have that way too much as it is. Save that for another Sunday. You know what's going to happen with that pizza, though? That box is going to be empty by the end of the game. It sure is. It is. I, pizza's the best food. It's just... Give me something different, you know. You, you guys got to expand your minds a little bit with the Super Bowl foods. You <laughs> Scott brought up, have. like, right, his, his first answer without even hesitation was beer. Yes. Um, I know, Jared, you've talked about, you, like, you've asked us, like, is that an acquired taste or, you know, that, that kind of discussion. I enjoy beer. I mean, I maybe had to acquire the taste in college or whatever, but um, I've never really been a huge drinking a lot of beer while eating. You know, like you go right. to like Buffalo Wild Wings or, you know, you go somewhere like that. You know, you see people just like slamming beers while they're eating. I always feel like it just fills me up more and then I can't like finish my food. Are you guys the same way? Or like, you know, I might sip on one during a Super Bowl party while I'm eating, but I just, I've never been big about slamming beers while eating. I 100% agree. I mean, a Super Bowl party, I'm, I'm along the lines of what Jared was talking about. It's the food. I don't really have to slam a bunch of beers watching the Super Bowl, but I might have one, maybe two, you know, but that's it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't drink for the casual aspect of it, I guess. <laughs> uh, not that I drink, you know, not that I drink, but I just don't see the purpose. Of, yeah, it's gross, Matt. You get full really easy. You're mixing it. You're not going to feel good the next day. As for my number three, I'm going the dessert route. Just give me the Muddy Buddy, uh, Chex Mix. Uh, like reindeer chow, whatever you want to call it. If you put that at a Super Bowl party, I can eat pounds and pounds of that stuff. That stuff is a sleeper. Like, it is. That, you rarely ever think about, I don't know, what do people call it, like puppy chow, yeah, or like the muddy buddy, whatever. Yeah, we call it puppy like chow. People don't like make that very often, but right, if it's there, or like, you know, sometimes your mom makes like a huge old batch of it, I'll sit there and eat the whole bowl. That stuff is good. It's awesome. It's one of my wife's go-tos during the holidays and it's you know it's a little bit of an undertaking to make it but it is fantastic and it's perfect for a super bowl party i was gonna go desserts too i hadn't thought about that the the puppy chow that's good but my mom i know a ton of people make them but my mom and my sisters they make uh they call them buckeyes i don't know if they're called buckeyes everywhere but it's basically mm -hmm. like a peanut butter ball and yep. then like dipped in chocolate if you get you guys know what i'm talking about there? A, my wife makes that for christmas as well they're good they're just Those a little too, too sweet for they, me, they do take a little time also but there's like a, a tray or whatever of Buckeyes, man, I, I could eat a bunch of those. Those <laughs> things are good. Delicious. Let me know what you guys think about this. This is a couple a couple things that I just think are just kind of suck for, for foods on Super Bowls. Number one, chili. I've heard that that's pretty popular to have on Super Bowls. Not good. Number two, nachos. I just can't stand it when everyone's dipping their hand in the in the – the nacho cheese and the meat and the, the lettuce and the salsa. Like, salsa just can get the heck out of here. And another problem I have, if you serve Sloppy Joes or taco bars at your Super Bowl gathering, you should not be hosting. That's such a cop-out. That's such an easy way out. I love that stuff. But on the Super Bowl, you, you either go balls to the wall or you're not hosting. You, sorry, <laughs> you're going to have to be the one that shows up with the, the Buckeyes, like Matt mentioned, or maybe... Uh, the, the cauliflower, uh, breaded cauliflower. Well, that's why I think the grazing food that we've talked about, you know, the food, I, lo I love chili, I love sloppy joes, but for a party situation where you're not at a sit-down table, really, you're sitting on the living room couches, you're you're walking around, you're hanging out, I, I'd stay away from that, and I'd stick with the, the finger food grazing stuff. So 
one thing I thought of when you, you said balls of the wall, it made me think of this, Jared. Meatballs? Th- those are di- those are awesome. Whether or not whether they're call- covered in like the the white like gravy. That's what I you, like. Yeah, or you cover the them Swedish with meatballs. you know just some sp- Italian red sauce. Like either of those. Oh, wow. So good. So I didn't even think of that. Oh my! You got my mouth watering. <laughs> well, are you guys uh, also like? Yeah, Ted, you said you're all about the the veggie tray. What about if someone brings like, you know, you got that person that brings like a nice salad. Oh, you know, a nice nice little dressed up salad. Nah, they're gonna get kicked out of a Super Bowl party if they come to <laughs> a come to a summer barbecue. That's acceptable. A Super Bowl party? Nah, no. Any party that's unacceptable. <laughs> It's, un- it's just unacceptable. This just kind of popped in my head. You know, you were talking about chili, um, and I was the first thing I thought of when, when you said chili was, I bet you that's more like a cold state thing. You know, like people yeah. in Arizona or whatever. That, I don't know. Maybe you're a warmer state. They might not be making chili. They're not. But I work with some people who uh, are from New Orleans, and, you know, so they're huge uh, Gumbo. Saints fans. And they talk about, like, down there, it's all about, like, crab legs, crawfish, you know, all that kind of stuff at Super Bowl parties. So I'd, I'd be curious to talk to some people from different areas and see if yeah. you know, they, they got some different cuisines or whatever. for we'll, ha- we'll have to tweet that out and see where we get it from different regions of the country. That's a great question right there. 85, 90, 95, 100. Looking for items to buy or sell? Look no further than SheridanAuctionService.com. We will solve your problem. Bring Sheridan Realty and auction your items and we will market them all over the country and get them sold. If you are looking to buy items, we can help with that too. Call today, 989-720-SELL. It's fast, easy, and we get results. SheridanAuctionService.com. Buy or sell, we'll get it done for you. Call 989-720-SELL. You'll do better with Sheridan. 